<clears throat> morning everybody so I'm just walking through the barn doing a quick check I just like to come in in the morning see if they have any fluid coming out of them like they might be in heat or something just do a quick check that way we know because it's easier when they're laying down to tell if they have anything coming out of them at all so they might be in heat so I just check the cows that I know are open everybody looks all good nobody in heat so I'm gonna go turn the lights on and then we can get into the rest of our day forgot to bring down the sawdust cart this is the first thing we do in the morning Fill the sawdust, just kind of gets the girls up, get some prepping so that we can hoe out. You can see most of them are pretty clean, especially considering that we don't actually have trainers. would like you to know he's sick. All hoed out. The girls are eating their dry hay. They're going to get a rat bale after this, but you guys already know that. So, that cow that I've been telling you about, the heifer, she had an adorable little baby girl. Um, it was kind of a rough start with her. Actually, she didn't eat the first two feedings. Um, so I had to tube feed her, so I brought that up to show you guys just so you know what that looks like. Since she didn't eat the first couple feedings, I wanted to just explain to you guys what we would do in that scenario because obviously it's very important for them to have their colostrum early on and as fast as you can give it to them that's really good for them just so they can have their mother's immunity and also just all the nutrients that are in that colostrum so they really need that so if they don't eat this is what we do we'll go grab this now this is just a regular bottle you can it has a hole here where you could like hang it when you're feeding a calf but I always just hold it in my hand when I'm doing it but anyway you would fill this with whatever you had, milk or colostrum, or you could put water and electrolytes in it, whatever you were trying to give the calf that you're trying to feed. You would warm that stuff up and you would put it in here and then you would screw this cover on all the way tight because that locks it and doesn't allow anything to come out here. So you'd screw it all the way on, which is always difficult because ours doesn't like to screw on very well. This is not our good one. I thought I'd just show you on this one because it's easier to show you. So. You screw the cover all the way tight so nothing can come out of it because you guys can see there that it says, I don't know if you can see, it says lock and open. So you'd screw it all the way tight so that it was locked and nothing can come out of here. So then you would grab the calf. Usually I like to do it when they're on the ground laying down because usually they're laying down anyway because they don't feel well. So what I do is I straddle them with my legs and then I hold their head like this and I'll have this bottle in this hand. So I wasn't taught to do this like by a class or anything. They do have classes that you can take to do this. But Brent taught me how to do it, so what you want to do is you're going to stick it in their mouth really slowly until you hit the back of their throat because if you force it in, you can actually, I guess, shove it down like their air pipe and then it can go into their lungs and fill up their lungs and they can die. So you're going to feed it in really slowly into their throat until you hit the back of their throat and then you're going to let them swallow. It always sounds like spring around here because the birds are just crazy. So, so then you're going to let them swallow it and then you're going to be able to push it down all the way till you get to about here and then you're going to unscrew this cover until fluid starts coming out of it and you'll be able to tell because it'll start to bubble and you may have to make adjustments pull it out a little bit you don't want to pull it out any more than this it possibly be out of their esophagus and just in like their mouth so you don't want to go out any farther than that but you can go you know a little farther or a little less if you want 
but just see where it starts going fastest. It is typically a struggle to hold them because they do not like it at all and I don't blame them. I wouldn't like something being shoved down my throat. But so then once that's done, you're going to make sure all of it is out. We just give it a while after it's down this tube just to make sure that all of it is out completely before you pull it out of their mouth because you don't want them to like gag on any of that. If you bring it out of their mouth and there's still some left in it, you don't want them to choke on it. So you wait until that's all the way out and then you just pull it out slowly and that's how you do it. So I just thought I'd show you guys that because she's actually the first calf we've had in probably a year and a half, I bet, that I've actually had two feet. So it was a little bit getting back into it. I don't really like doing it, but obviously you have to do it just to make sure that they survive. So I had to do that with her twice and now she's eating perfectly fine. So like I said, I just wanted to show you guys how we do that when a calf doesn't eat. Just in case you guys were wondering what we do. So I'm just going to feed her. We're actually waiting for the cattle dealer to come. See? She's also been having trouble standing. Uh, her front legs are a little bit crooked, so... It was like physical therapy there. The first few days we had to stand her up. She couldn't get up on her own, so I would stand her up and then hold her so she'd be able to stand for a while and she would just like shake. Alright, so the cattle dealer is just leaving and I thought I would show you guys something before we got going on milking. So, I've never really showed you guys this part of the process, so I've got two of these buckets here. So, this is the seed after it's been sitting in the pail for a couple days. I soaked it first, and now it's been in these pails. This is the fodder system that we've been doing. So you can see, after it sat for a couple days, it starts sprouting this root system. Actually, honestly, it's probably sprouted a little bit too much. I wasn't really paying attention to it. I should have been planting it. A little bit sooner than this but this one's not as much you know I guess it's just as bad but I have these two clean trays here so I'm just gonna put those in trays and I'll show you how I do that so I just dump it in there and then level it off it has drain holes in this side so you do have to keep it a little bit away from the drain hole that's the only thing because it can clog it up with the root system and then the water will drain and your seed will rot you guys can see I have a little bit of space here before the drain holes, just so that water can get out there. And then I'll just stick them up here. There's a little 2 by 4 behind them so they're kind of tilted so that they can drain the water. So. Just like that. All done. Now we got to start milking. <laughs> milking and the girls are eating their second veil. I kind of wanted to show you guys this because this is one of our worst veils that we've had so far this year. You can see that it's really wet and just really coarse and just not very good so they are eating it. They're not, they surprise me. They're fussy in some ways and in other ways they will eat things that you wouldn't think they would really care so much about. She doesn't really care for it but they are eating it but it's definitely not, it's definitely pretty poor quality so we won't be feeding many of those. We'll probably be feeding them the free stall so they can just pick at it whenever they want. But So I got thinking, I had been telling you guys in the last video how many dry cows we had and I also wanted to show you like some of them are bagging. Mary here, you can see she's bagging pretty good. She's getting pretty close. She's also changing in the rear end a little bit. She's getting very close. She's pretty wide. Oh, she's changing. She's coming on fast. Um, Cindy is changing pretty fast. You can see she's bagging just a little bit. Apple is really close. She's probably about two weeks away, maybe less than two weeks. She's bagged up a lot in the last day or so. She's looking pretty pudgy as well. So that will be exciting because she's a good cow and I will really be interested to see if she has a Normandy calf because I would love to keep it. Auburn here who's changing just a little bit. Looking at all the dry cows just made me think about how 
we decide when a cow should be dried off and how we really go through that process and I thought maybe you guys might be interested in seeing that. Obviously we have the vet come and do preg checks and what he does is he has this little monitor. He wears like special glasses and has like an optical camera on it and he will clean the cow out. So basically what he does is he just sticks his arm up a cow, he has like a full sleeve glove on and he'll stick his arm up the cow, he'll clean her out, make sure there's no crap in her or anything. And then he will stick this camera in there, just look to see if she's bred or if she's open. So he'll tell us how many months he thinks she is or how many days he thinks she is. And we will write that all down in the cow's chart. So this is the cow's chart book. It's actually an old Eastern AI book, which isn't even in business anymore, so it's a pretty old book. But I just wanted to show you guys some of that, so I saved a page that was really good so I can show you guys. So this right here is Reba's chart. You can see it has her name up here, what kind of cow she is, or her father and her mother, what kind of cows both of those were. You can draw her markings over here. You guys can see there, um, these are Gen X papers because we used to do Gen X, her cow ID number. And then we have all her heat dates, the bull used, the date she calved, and the name or number of her calf, but we just use it for the gender of her calf. And then a date that she had any kind of medical treatment or anything. Um, so we'll just keep that all written down in there. So then how that works along with what the vet will tell us, we'll write down what he thinks she is, whether she's open or whether she's a few months bred. So if he said she was five months bred, we would write that down in a chart. We found that our vet can be a month off either direction. He can be either a month early or a month late. So we like to keep a really close eye on them when they're around six months to his date. We like to dry them off into seven and a half months. Sometimes a little later on really old cows because they don't need such a long dry period. So once they get around that date, we will go back in the cow's records and we will check their last heat date. And we'll see if that lines up with when the vet said they were bred or how far along he said they were. If it doesn't line up or maybe her heat date's not there, then we will try it the old fashioned way and we will bump a cow. So I wanted to show you guys how we do that. All right, so I thought what better cow to try it on than little Miss Pudgy right here, but the lighting is not very good, so you'll have to bear with me here. But So what we'll do when we'll bump a cow, you can't actually bump a cow until they're around six months, five and a half if they have a really, really big calf in them. But obviously you'll be able to bump her because she's super close. So I just wanted to use her as an example to show you guys how we would do that. So you're always gonna do it from the right side, and I'm not sure if that's because right-handed and it's easier to do it that way but I think generally they most often carry it on the right side anyway so what you're gonna do is obviously make them let them know you're there just stick my hand right here and then I'll use my hand like this with my thumb out a little bit and I'm just gonna poke into their side a little bit like this now you're gonna feel around just a little bit kind of on their lower stomach and so you feel that calf which is right there now with her, I don't need to push in far at all, but with a cow that's farther off, maybe six or five and a half months, you're going to have to push in quite a ways to feel that calf, but you will feel it for sure because you'll feel their head, or her, I could actually feel the calf kicking me because she's so close. So I just thought I'd show you guys that, how we do that. Honestly, after some practice, you get really good at telling how far along a cow is when you bump them. You can tell if you can just barely bump them. She's from five and a half to six months. And if you can bump her really easy, you can tell she's probably around seven months. So I just thought I'd show you guys that. So that's kind of how we keep a really close eye on them, is we bump them more often than not, just to make sure that we can actually just see if everything matches up with what the vet said, or we can make a judgment call on whether we think she's closer and dry her off sooner rather than later, just to make sure that she's all set. So I'm gonna end this video right here. It's probably a little bit on the longer side already. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope you found it interesting how we do some things around here. If you do like these videos and you find small farming interesting, please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. And also hit that notification bell so you guys know when new videos are being posted. Um, keep it real and keep farming and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.